Let's start by looking at evidence of price rigidity in the real world. What we're going to see is that um, price rigidity is actually uh, quite widespread. So uh, what's price rigidity? Uh, at a high level, price rigidity is the fact that you know would exist if prices uh, don't fully respond to underlying uh, shocks. That would be what price rigidity is. And uh, of course, a special case would be a fixed price in which um, the price doesn't move. Uh, and that, of course, you know, is an extreme case because in reality, we know that all prices are going to move at some point or the other. Um, but uh, your price, you know, we'll see that in, in our models, and prices don't have to be fixed uh, and very often you get exactly the same qualitatively you get exactly the same behavior as a fixed price just with a little bit of price rigidity um, we'll see that in general anything that's not a flexible price will give you a behavior that's the same as a fixed price and of course the more rigid the price the bigger the effects of shocks but qualitatively the effect you know fixed and rigid are going to have the same qualitative effect. The only one, the only case in which the effects are markedly different qualitatively would be a flexible price. Um, I think that's, that's the proper way to look at it. Um, anything that's not flexible is rigid, um, and anything that's rigid, including fixed, will have the same effect qualitatively as we'll see. Um, So price rigidity, prices do not, uh, and the, this is opposed to price flexibility, which means that prices fully respond to shock. And if they fully respond to them, it then basically absorbs them. Prices are going to absorb all the shocks and that quantities are not going to move. Okay, so uh, so we're trying to see the question is, do we have a lot of evidence that prices do not fully respond to shock? Um, so indeed we do. Uh, so let me see, let me show you a little bit like what's out there. Um, so the most uh, common evidence. So we're starting with prices. We'll move to wages later. We're starting with prices just because there has been a big literature in the past 20 years looking at uh, price rigidity. Um, so that's mostly why we start with that. So most of the evidence uh, on uh, price rigidity takes the form of the table that I've uh, copied here. So this is a very nice table uh, that comes out from a survey by um, Amy Nakamura and John Steinson that was published in 2013 in the um, Annual Economic Review. And this is summarizing a lot of their work as well as uh, the work of um, Clino and Christoph, um, and even some previous work by Bill and Clino, um, and so all of this is uh, all of these papers are looking at price changes in uh, consumer prices. Uh, they are looking at the U.S. Um, and what they are most looking at is the frequency of uh, price changes. So that's what they focus on and. All these uh, research teams had access to uh, the micro data used um, by the BLS to construct the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. So, you know, inflation numbers, what we hear a lot uh, in the, about in the news these days, inflation number is constructed from uh, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. So inflation is just the rate of change in the CPI. The CPI is the Consumer Price Index is constructing every, constructed every month by the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And to construct that, 
they have to measure the price of all kind of uh, products every month. And so there is a micro data set that lists the price of all these products. And so all these research team, Amy and John, and also Bill and Clino and Clino and Christoph had access to this uh, data set. And in this data, they were able to look at um, the frequency of uh, price changes uh, for all bunch of items. So what is it that they find? So first you can see here, we have two things. We look at the median uh, of these uh, statistics and the mean. So of course, these two things are not exactly the same and we'll see that um, we'll have some slight difference here. And so um, two things are reported here. So we have the frequency of price changes here. Um, so frequency of price changes, it's um, the probability that a price uh, changes in a given month. Um, so this is the frequency that's reported here, the probability to change. Implied duration, well, this is the duration uh, during which the price remains at the same level as implied by the frequency. So the, implied, the duration that's implied by the frequency, so this is one over the frequency. Because you know that if you have a poison process with an arrival rate of, say, lambda, uh, lambda it's the probability that your event occurs during a time period, say during a month. And further, so this is what's reported in the first column. Lambda is just the frequency. And then once you have such a poison process, the um, expected duration until the event occurs is one over lambda. So when you have this parameter lambda, one over lambda is the duration until the event occurs. That's implied duration reported in the second column. And lambda is the frequency at which the event occurs. That's the, what's reported in the first column. Um, so first column, the probability to change uh, that the price changes in a given month. Second column, it's one over the frequency, and that's the expected uh, duration of a fixed price. So this is the duration during which your prices are going to be fixed. Uh, and this is across a lot of different products. So uh, here we have both the median values of these uh, statistics and their mean values. Okay, and then uh, you can notice that, so we have frequency implied duration. These are just like two ways to look at the same thing. Uh, this is all uh, implied duration, so this is in months. Frequency is a probability uh, per month. Probability that something uh, occurs per month. Okay, and you can see that uh, you have two concepts that are reported. So we have uh, regular prices here and here, and then we have posted prices here and here. What's the difference between these two things? Um, well, posted prices are just prices that are posted in the store. Regular prices are posted prices, but uh, from which we exclude sales. Uh, and in that literature, there is a big debate about whether you know you should include sales or not include sales in the frequency of price changes, whether sales matter or not. Um, we we'll see that it's actually not very relevant to think about uh, to think about price rigidity for. Uh, various reason it was it's you know in this context people cared a lot about it because that parameter that frequency is very important but in general I, I think you know this debate was all uh, overblown and it really doesn't you know all of these things don't really matter all that much um, so but anyway it's important to know what these different objects are so posted prices uh, this is including Sales and regular prices, these are excluding sales. Um, and so, of course, because posted prices include sales and because sales occur, you know, in supermarkets, they're going to occur fairly frequently. Um, 
prices that are posted, they change more frequently than regular prices. So you can see, for instance, here we have 20% uh, chance of change per month for the posted price, whereas for the regular price in the same per period, you have only 11% uh, chance of change. Here it's the same. You can see the posted price, 20% ch uh, chance of change, and the regular price is only 13%. So you can see the frequency uh, of regular price is about half uh, the frequency of change of the posted price. Um, Okay, so these are all the various definitions. Um, so what are things uh, that are particularly uh, interesting here? So the implied durations are always quite uh, interesting to look at because um, you know this is telling us like how long we can expect a price to remain the same. And so you can see, so uh, if we look at regular prices, uh, and then you know you have different you have different time periods and you know whether you include substitution or substitution so you have vari varieties of things but nevertheless you can see that uh, so here we have you know uh, eight months the you can expect the price to remain the regular price to remain the same here seven months nine months again eight months uh, so you know I think eight months is uh, roughly what pops out here and uh, here it's seven months um, and of course if you look at posted price which includes sales the price at which this is uh, going to be fixed is uh, roughly half of that um, so i think you know in, in median if we look at the median this is roughly you know seven to eight months of you know a price stability And if you look at the at the mean number instead of the median, uh, prices appear, uh, if anything, a little bit uh, a little bit stabler. So here you see you have roughly 11 uh, months. Here you're more at nine. Um, so it's a little bit uh, here. It's for regular prices, and here you have another nine. So for if we look at the mean value for all of this uh, across all items, uh, you know we're we are closer to, uh, you know, say nine to eleven months here of price stability. And the reason why the mean is bigger than the median is because you have some products that have prices that stay stable for a very, very, uh, for a very long time, uh, which, you know, pushes the mean higher than the median. Um, So the fact that there is such uh, noticeable difference between the median value of the statistics and the mean value of the statistics tells us that uh, you know, there'll be quite a lot of heterogeneity uh, and uh, in the frequency of price changing across uh, items and that you know like the distribution of this price changing is going to be quite interesting and in fact uh, Nakamura and Steinson in their uh, very nice survey they report um, the distribution of the frequency of price changes. So it's uh, quite interesting to see a bit how different products, uh, how flexible are the prices for different products. Um, this is, uh, so we have a lot of heterogeneity in uh, you know, frequency of price changes. So if you want, there's a lot of heterogeneity in how flexible or rigid prices are. So here's a very nice graph that illustrates this. Um, so this is again from the same Nakamura and Steinson survey. This is looking at, um, this is a, basically a histogram that shows us the frequency uh, of uh, the frequencies or the probability of changing uh, a price per month probability per month, so this is the probability of changing price. Uh, and so this is, we can see here in the, in the caption, these are for uh, regular price changes. So this is, uh, this is excluding 
sales. And again, you know, this is a period 1998-2005. This uh, is from the CPA. So what can you see? So you can see that you have a bunch of uh, you have a bunch of items that have a frequency that's very close. Uh, so you have a bunch of items that have a frequency that's very close to zero here. So this is uh, prices that are essentially uh, fixed over the period. Because uh, the probability of changing price per month is, you know, almost zero. Um, then you can notice that there is really a big uh, amount of products that have a frequency uh, around, you know, kind of 10% here. There's really a bunch of product here. So 10% probability per month of changing uh, your price. So these are uh, these are. These are products whose prices are fixed for, you know, about 10 months or about a year. Uh, if you have a frequency of changing price slightly below uh, 10%, then you will have prices that are fixed for about a year in this thing. Then you have prices that are completely fixed here. And then you can see that after that, you have prices that are kind of scattered uh, all over um, the frequency range. Um, and at the end, very interestingly, you notice that you have a bunch of product here at the top end of the range. With a, so these are you know prices that for sure will change every month. So these are prices that are essentially flexible, uh, in the sense that you know they are going to constantly change. Uh, they are going to constantly change uh, every month. So there is indeed you know a, a lot of heterogeneity in how prices change um, and. That, that's not very surprising because, uh, well, you know, of course, you have very different norms of pricing across products. You know, something that's sold in a retail store is very different from something that's going to be sold in a supermarket. Uh, you know, goods that are perishable would be very different from goods that are uh, that you can store. Services are very different from goods, and so on and so forth. But furthermore, you know, the cost, the underlying cost for different goods also vary. Uh, Vary widely, and um, you have goods for which the cost of production fluctuates um, a lot at a very high frequency, whereas you have goods for which the cost of production is very stable. And so there's no reason to expect um, the frequency to be the same. You know, if the underlying uh, shocks to the production cost are very are very different.